Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming, and today I've got something a little bizarre for you. A little weird even for me. <laughs> I'm excited. So today we're going to be talking about how you can harvest strategy and tactics from the basic StarCraft storyline. There's a website out there that has a really good description of how the races are, and I'm not really sure where they came from or if this is their original work or anything, but links are in the description to as far as I went down that rabbit trail. But I wanted to read to you guys over the next few videos one of each of the races, how they talk about the story behind the races and how that affects strategy and tactics for each race. It's actually really fascinating to me, but you know, like I could be on cloud nine right now and you guys like still on earth. So if this is a little bit nuts, let me know in the comments below. Okay, guys, I want to start with Protoss and passive and conservative. Protoss are totally different from adaptable Terrans and relentless Zerks. With its extremely advanced technology and great telepathic abilities, Protoss have long considered themselves to be the most powerful species in the galaxy. The principles of the Kala dictate a rigid road and the Protoss abhor the idea of diverting from it for fear of once again provoking civil strife. To me, that's really cool. Like, you know, I, I know the StarCraft storyline, but when you really distill it like that, taking away the character names, the place names, and just putting it in a paragraph, it actually becomes mechanics as metaphor in a way, which is a concept that says a game plays, like the way the game plays, is a metaphor for something else. Well, we just heard all the Protoss metaphors, and let's think about how StarCraft Protoss, StarCraft II rather, Protoss is played. Well, first of all, you get no higher level tech until you get the cyber core. So every game you're forced into one of like three builds. Nexus first, Gateway first, or Forge first. That's pretty rigid, but you know, every race kind of has some of those things. So eh, it would be it would be stretching it to say that that's the, the big rigidity. But then let's talk about the cyber core. Protoss is the only race that gets almost all of their tech unlocked from one building. Think about it. If you want Hydralisk, you build a Hydralisk den. If you want Ultralisk, you build an Ultralisk den. You uh, want, you know, Banelings or Roaches, you have to build those technologies. And every building's different. As a Terran, you know, sure, you get an Armory, you get access to uh, tanks and Thors. But you only had access to the Hellions and the Mines when you built the factory in the first place. So, there's more options available to the other races. Protoss is very rigid coming off of that cyber core. So once you build the Stargate, you're kind of stuck on Stargate units for a while. And you constantly hear Protoss players complaining about the fact that it's way easier for other races to tech switch. I just find it so ridiculous at this point that every race can pretty much switch up their tech tree. You know what I mean? And Protoss is sitting here like, you have to go Colossus or you have to go Sidestorm. I mean, even Sidestorm is just getting experimented with So limited, and I mean, Zerg and Terran is the only race in a game where the options are literally endless. You can screw around and do it just about anything you want, you know. And I mean, what is Protoss supposed to do in that moment? Protoss cannot have early game scouting. They cannot create the, the aggression without being economically behind. Everything looks like an all-in. And I mean, what am I supposed to do? Let's talk about the adaptable Terran aspect of this, though. Terrans are pretty adaptable. They have the most units of any race. So they have a unit for every situation, and they have units that are good in all situations. Relentless Zerg? Yeah, Zerg have to be a base ahead. They overwhelm you with large numbers, and they just constantly, 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 constantly come at you. Once they start coming at you, they don't stop. Might take them a while to get started, but they don't stop. But Protoss have extremely advanced technology and great telepathic abilities. They've considered themselves to be the most powerful species in the galaxy. They could be right. Think about it. At every expansion pack, even in the base Wings of Liberty, everyone feared the Protoss Death Ball. In some ways, that's the reason Legacy of the Void has a faster economy. Because they are the most powerful. When they're all working together at that 200-200 stage, no race synergizes quite like Protoss. Think about it. Force fields? Clump. All your units together, Colossi, four or five of them, grab those clumps, melt them, eradicate them immediately. You've got uh, so 
so much synergy from a Protoss player. It's just a matter of getting there. And that's part of the rigidity as well. They have to stay together to work well. Think about it. With the exception of warp prisms and zealot harassment, can you think of that many opportunities where a Protoss army is better split than working together? Because I can think of many, many opportunities like that for Zerg. You would want to surround your opponent so you get some of your lings, like just straight up speedlings behind them, and your lings and banelings, like some lings and all your banelings, are coming from the front. So the lings come up from behind them and you create like a sandwich. I can think of similar examples with Terran, but I cannot think of any with Protoss, and I think that's really fascinating. Rigid, impassive, conservative, powerful. Bringing the wrath, I gotta think fast I finally get blinked, so I think that I can last But I'm boxed and no options Muta still harassing, he's laughing LOL, he thinks he has me Gasping, I take a third This is way absurd I gotta split the troops so it plays with my nerves Stick to the plan